Good morning. It's approximately a hair past a freckle. It's still dark out. But I have an adventure to get started. It's over 3,000 miles away. No, I'm not driving. I'm flying for the first time in quite some time. Yes, I got my vaccine shot. In fact, I'm going on an international adventure, which I haven't done in quite some time either. I'm really excited because I'm meeting one of my very close friends. I haven't seen her in so long. It's going to be amazing, and I'm really excited to bring you along with me. I have a flight to catch at 540. If I can keep my eyes open long enough, I will get out of here and head to the airport, park my little home on wheels. Hopefully she's still here when I come back. The first thing I thought when I opened my eyes was, where's the coffee? Because I'm pretty sure besides blood that runs through my veins, it's caffeinated coffee. So I'm gonna make myself a cup and get going. If you haven't picked up already by now that I'm obsessed with coffee, let me fill you in. <laughs> The last three years I've been working on a little secret project that I guess isn't so secret anymore because I'm telling you. I've tried hundreds of different roasts and profiles trying to develop my own coffee line. As you know, I already have an instant mushroom coffee with seven superfood mushrooms, which I love. That still exists, and I still love a superfood mushroom coffee. But I've also been trying to work on a normal coffee roast line. After three years, I finally tested and picked six roasts that I'm proud to put my name on. I'm really excited because coffee is just a huge part of my life. I know it's a huge part of so many people's lives. It's like a special time you get every morning or evening. Just you and your coffee. And hopefully through this line of coffee... I can bring a little bit of happiness, joy, right to your cup. Before I let on or give you any more details, let me know down below in the comments if you'd be interested at all in seeing any behind the scenes footage of me roasting some coffee. This is not an official launch, it's just a little secret launch hidden away in my YouTube video. As of this morning though, the six roasts that I've chosen are available to try and purchase on my website at drstraight.com where you can see the profiles, notes, and roasts that I've chosen. I really hope you check them out. A lot of them are darker roasts because I personally prefer a rich, dark roast, but I tried to offer a little bit of everything. I actually have two of my favorites here with me think you'll find the graphics pretty entertaining. One of my first and favorites. Oh. Is Hannah's Magic. Dark chocolate with a hint of citrus. The second one is the, are you ready for it? Bigfoot Reserve. And I'd like to say that this roast I especially chose because if I were to ever meet and be allowed the chance to have a cup of coffee with Bigfoot, this is what I'd prepare. Cocoa molasses and toasted walnuts. I think he'd oblige. You'll have to check it out. I have six different roasts though. Those are just two of my favorites. But if you want to check out all six of the roasts that I've chosen, make sure you go to drstraight.com and check out the full collection that I've put together. But for now, I have to finish this coffee, try to head to the airport before I'm late, and try to not miss my flight so we can get this adventure started. See you soon. Today I'm going to show you a small wonder of the world. Scattered beneath the jungles of the Yucatan Peninsula, cenotes. An hour into the jungle with no cell service or civilization in sight, we arrive. Hello my friend, it's your girl Hannah, coming at you with another adventure, and today I'm in the jungles of Mexico. I brought it down south, um, 
going down into a cenote. I've never seen a cenote before. I'm really excited to show you, so let's head down. Millions of years ago, the Yucatan Peninsula existed underwater. Eventually, ocean levels dropped and exposed the limestone reef to the surface. Over time, the reef dried up and vegetation grew over the surface, and as the coral limestone died away and dissolved, large cavern systems were left behind underground. As more water seeps in, more limestone dissolves away, leaving larger and larger caverns. Eventually the ceilings of the caves become weaker and collapse in on themselves, revealing these underground cenotes. Rain runoff from the surface caused formation of stalactites and stalagmites. Drops of rainwater rich in minerals from the ground drains through the surface and drips into the underground caverns. The slow drip gradually over time creates the stalactite formation. If the water that drops to the floor of the cave still has minerals in it, it slowly builds on itself, forming stalagmites. Some grow so large they create columns in the caves, which goes to show how many thousands of years have passed for their development. Various vegetation and animals inhabit these caves, some of which are found nowhere else. They are beautiful and special places unique to the Yucatan Peninsula. Many of these cenotes are interconnected far beneath the surface. Scuba diving through these caves and tunnels is very popular. They say there's over 6,000 cenotes on the Yucatan Peninsula. Good morning, my friend. It's day two of my cenote adventure. I'm out here in the jungle trying to find as many cenotes as I can. I'm really excited because this is a subterranean cenote, which means it's below ground. You're not allowed to wear any sunscreen or bug spray in these to keep them as clean and pure as possible, but because of that, I've been eaten alive by mosquitoes. But it's totally worth it because they're so magnificent and beautiful. So let's check this out. I came to learn that the cenotes were a very sacred part of the Mayan culture. Originating as far back as 2600 BC, much of the Mayan civilization was founded on the Yucatan Peninsula. The Mayans used the cenotes for various functions, 
Because there are no rivers or streams on the Yucatan Peninsula, the cenotes served as a vital source of fresh water, as well as for special ceremonies and rituals. Many of the sacrifices performed by the Mayans in these caves led them to believe that they were entrances to the underworld, where their spirit would rest after death. I'm in this subterranean cenote. It's absolutely beautiful. It's incredibly deep. I can't tell how deep it is. There's birds flying everywhere, and I'm gonna jump off this platform right here. Check it out. Standing 16 feet in the air, peering down into the dark felt eerie. I can certainly understand the spirituality the Mayans held for those cenotes. Climbing down what feels like a well in the ground, only to find a giant pit filled with crystal clear blue water. It felt like something out of a storybook. However, swimming out into what feels like a bottomless cavern of water with only a few small fish as your companions, you can't help but wonder what ancient Mayan spirits may be lurking beneath. 